Hey everyone, Local here. In this video, I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite tricks that I use in Path of Exile. I'm sure that there's going to be something in here that you haven't seen before. So make sure to watch through the whole thing so that you can see everything that I have to share. I promise you some of these are really, really cool. So I'm sure all of you are aware that you should be using move on your left click. You can just click here, then click move only. But what a lot of you probably aren't doing, especially at the start of the game, when you just create a new character is setting your movement to a keyboard button. So if you hold, let's say I've got R, I can move. I'm not even touching my mouse now. I'm just moving it without clicking. So you think that's pretty cool. But why this is so important is it means you can do inventory management while moving. You can just click things. My mouse is free. I can also keep moving while my passive tree is open. You see, I'm still moving while I'm going, just holding R. So that's a really cool trick. While I'm here, another thing that is absolutely excellent with the introduction of instant cost skills, especially defensive instant cost skills like Arcane Cloak or Val Molten Shell or Molten Shell, you can set that to your left click. Then you just use that to move. And as it comes off cooldown, you'll just keep recasting it. You don't have to worry about casting it all the time. And the best part of this is even if you're a click and hold type of player like me, some people click, 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 click to move. I click and hold. It'll still recast as soon as it comes off cooldown. So make sure to use this with all your instant cast skills. I'll put some on the screen now so you can see which ones are good, but bear that in mind. Another good trick is to use Smoke Mine and Flame Dash in conjunction, but this is an excellent example of why combining Smoke Mine and Flame Dash together is much better than using a single individual movement skill. And of course, instead of Flame Dash, you can use Frost Blink or Dash or something like that, but make sure to use this one, especially while leveling. It'll help you go way faster. So looking at some of the tricks we can do with the bench, if you're going to start trying to create a new item. Let's say you've got a base that you want to use and you it's three socketed. You want to get it six linked as soon as possible. What you want to do first before anything else is craft quality. This is going to help you get six sockets and six links more quickly. For a more advanced version of this, you can first use perfect fossils, try and get the quality to 30%, then craft on this quality mod. You'll have 48% quality. It's much easier technically to hit six sockets and six links in this way. Another thing you might not know, let's say you've got a corrupted item and you think, well, the socket colors are wrong. I can't use it. You can actually use the bench to add sockets and change the colors. The only difference is that it's going to cost you an equivalent amount of vial orbs as it is jewelers or fusings or chromes. So this one's got three sockets. I can go here. Now it's got four sockets. Costs a bit extra, but it's well worth it. A great way to recolor items. Let's say you've got this astral plate, but you need two greens and a blue socket. So you might go into your stash and start spamming chromes and you just don't hit it. You've got two green, two red, one blue. It's just not working out. Another way to do this using jewelers and the bench is to go down and then say, okay, I'm going to have two sockets, then go to the color recipe. So let's say at least two green sockets. So now you're starting off with two green sockets. Then you go back to the socket craft. Then you're going to bounce between three sockets and two sockets. So I want green, green, blue. So I'm going to go three sockets, two sockets, three sockets, two sockets. This is a much easier way to get off colors on items that otherwise would struggle to roll them. It can use quite a bit of jewelers but it's a much, much more reliable way to hit, let's say three green. I wanted three blue, but this just shows that it's much easier to get those off colors using the bench. Another advanced bench trick, if you're going to use an exalt on an item or a harvest craft, make sure to first block a modifier that is common that you do not want on that item. So let's say in this case, I want to roll hybrid life, which is a prefix. So what I should do is block a suffix. So if I go down, pick any suffix, probably one like this, which is cheap, craft it on, then you're going to slam the item. Okay, I hit armor, unfortunate, but before you use your exalt, make sure to block other modifiers that you don't want. 
Otherwise, you're going to regret it. Another cute little trick that you can do, if you want to open your Masters League specific windows, you can just control click them and it'll immediately pop up. So Cassia opens anointing, Zana will open up the Atlas and so on. Tane, if you control click him, will automatically open up a cell window. So it's nice to keep him near your map device. But the rest of them, control click, easy, easy. You don't have to go click, 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 click. Let's see what Zana has to sell. Well, she's got a whole lot of maps, none of which I want. So what am I going to do? If you want to reset Zana's thing, all you need to do is put a map in the device, select any of these master missions, click it, and then you'll see her inventory has changed. You don't even need to worry about running the map itself. You just need to click that reset button. I'll do it again just to demonstrate. Check her inventory. Again, it's different. That's a very, very nice way. If you've got a lot of master missions to waste, you can even do it with just white master missions. Roll this a bunch of times. Maybe even a Cortex pops up. And also make sure if you do run a master mission, just check Zana every time, just in case there's some high value item in there. The next trick is a very easy way to find movement speed boots from a vendor. This is very helpful early on in a league. So what you're going to do is type NN and copy that. Then when you go to a vendor, go to purchase items, control F to highlight items, control V to copy that NN. Nothing shows up. But the reason we do NN is because movement speed boots with 10% movement speed are called runners. That is the prefix for that. So by highlighting NN, only items with that movement speed are going to be highlighted. That's a pretty cool trick early on in League if you want to sweat and try go as fast as possible. Another trick that is pretty cool, it's again very finicky. It's something you actually have to practice, which is talking to a vendor and then running away like that so that you can buy and sell while standing further away from them. Again, this is like seriously try hard strats that if you want to go super duper fast, you can do it like that. I mean, I'm terrible at it, as you can see. If you mistime it, it completely screws up. Now I'm going to go through some very useful vendor recipes. If you sell white boots and an orb of augmentation and Oh, these are nice. A Quicksilver Flask, you're going to get boots with 10% increased movement speed. Rip, Alchemist, Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline. You can then actually repeat this to get another 5%. And you can keep repeating this up until 30%. So while leveling, if you've got any spare Quicksilvers lying around, this is a good way to get some nice movement speed boots. And you can just keep upgrading them as you go. Another phenomenal recipe while leveling, Magic Wand, Orb of Alteration, and a resistance ring will give you a wand with flat added damage to spells. If you use a normal ring, you're going to get T8. If you use a magic ring, you're going to get T7. And if you use a rare ring, you're going to get T6. This is super powerful. Don't overlook this. If you're playing a spell cost at the start of League, make sure to use this recipe. If you can't find a resistance ring, you can sell an iron ring and a skill gem to get a resistance ring and then use it in this recipe. Another trick early on in League, especially that will help you fill out your atlas is the three to one map trick. So if you put in three maps, let's say tier one, you're going to get a tier two map. So you might think, okay, cool. These three always turn into this. That's not actually how it works. Each item has got like a unique ID almost. And as you reorder them, these numbers are going to sort of add up and pop out a different map. So you can see these three give me a caldera. These three give me a coves. These three give me colonnade. So you can just shuffle these around. Let's say you needed a specific colonnade map. Shuffle around these maps until you get what you want. It's not a set thing. So try that out, especially early on in League. It'll help you fill out your atlas more quickly. Another cute little trick that you can do is, let's say you've got a whole lot of items on the ground that you're picking up like this, and you kind of don't pick them up nicely, and now there's these gaps. You can press Z to hide items, and then Z again. And they kind of go a bit closer together. Do it again. They kind of close all those gaps, so you don't have to click as far. So if there's one tip that you are going to take away from this video, it is this. We're on the trade site, and 
if you are used to searching sat filters and let's say you want, I don't know, added elemental damage with attacks and you type added, oh, no results found. Uh, what's the wording? Weapon, element, oh, no, nothing. So if you don't remember the exact wording, which is elemental damage with attack skills, what you can do instead, because this is like a very strict filter, you can type a little tilde, dunk, and then this immediately puts it into a fuzzy search. So you can just type elemental attack skill, and you'll see, there we go. It doesn't have to be the exact wording. So if you're searching on here and you can't find what you want, but you sort of know what the wording is, type a little tilt, dunk, and then you can go elemental resistance and everything will pop up without needing the exact wording. So if you want to find the location of a map on the Atlas, you can hover over it and try to find where something is highlighted or you can just right click on the map. It'll instantly censor the screen on where that map is. Now I'm gonna go through a lightning round of noob tricks. If you're an experienced player, you can click off the video now, but I recommend you stick around just in case. There might be something here that you've overlooked your entire PoE career, so let's go. If you wanna reset an instance, you can control click it. It'll bring up this window and then you can click new. This is nice, say, in the Blood Aqueduct if you're just running back and forth. Resetting the instance means that it'll create a new area in that area. So I'll do it again. This is the current area I'm in. I'll create a new one. All the monsters are going to be refreshed so you can clear that area again. You can shift click to separate stacks. I'm sure you know that one, but if you don't, do it. You can press Control and Shift to buy full stacks of these from vendors. Also make sure if you want to buy one, control click. That's the same for putting things into your stash. Control click, we'll put it straight in. If you want to sell something, control click, we'll put it straight in there. It's not 2000 anymore. You don't have to manually click things like this anymore. Thank God. Someone in my chat asked me the other day, how do I make my minimap so small? You can make it bigger and smaller with the numpad plus minus buttons. So you can do that like that. You can also change the way it looks with your options. If you go options, UI, landscape, transparency, you can increase or decrease that. Map transparency, increase or decrease. And the zoom you can also do here, but you can also just press the plus minus. That's much quicker. Also, if you're playing the game and suddenly you realize, oh no, my weapon is gone. Where did it go? Don't email GGG and say there's a bug in the game. There's just a weapon swap. If you press X, I believe is default. X will swap your weapons. If you don't have anything in your second thing, that's where it is. It's hiding. Also, you can press Z to hide labels above stashes and NPCs and things, as well as hide items. So if you're in the game and you're killing monsters and nothing's showing up on the ground, just make sure that you've got labels displayed with Z. That's going to be it for this video. If you made it to the end, thank you for watching. If you like the video, a like and subscribe are very much appreciated. I'm going to be streaming sort of sporadically on twitch.tv slash lockerhole. So if you want to catch me there when I am live, a follow would be appreciated too. I can't promise to have a strict schedule, but I will be on intermittently. So if you guys have any other tips that you would like to share, please leave it in the comments below. I love learning things. I've been learning so much from you guys in the comments. So... I'm happy to be schooled a bit or politely informed. Anyway, have a wonderful day, everyone. Take care, and I wish you the best of luck in 3.13. Bye-bye.